Several weeks before Nathan talked again to the teacher of the Happy Day Club, although he passed her house often. Once he went around the block three times trying to get enough courage to go to the door. <laughs> then one day he gave himself a good scolding. You big coward, he said in a low voice. What kind of a soon-to-be-a-man are you anyhow? You just go and ring that bell. Do you hear me, sissy? And he did just that. Nathan did not know the teacher had seen him often as he walked down her street. Always she was praying for the Jewish boy who had attended the club only once. Almost as soon as Nathan pressed the doorbell, the door opened wide. There she was. That lovely lady with a happy smile welcoming him. <laughs> Come in, Nathan, she said. She remembered my name, he thought. She remembered my name. Nathan was nervous, but bravely he said, I have come to apologize for being rude that day when I came to club and talked to you afterwards. I am trained by my parents to be polite. I'm sorry I forgot my manners. I was angry, you know. Yes, Nathan, I know. It's easy for us Jews to laugh and cry and get angry suddenly, isn't it? Now, what did you want to ask first? As Nathan hesitated, she said, Probably you want to know how I can say I am a Jew and be a Christian also. Is that it? Yes, Nathan answered in a voice not much more than a whisper. I don't really understand why being born a Gentile doesn't make one a Christian. And I don't see how a Jew can become a Christian. You are a thinker, Nathan. It is true that no one, neither Jew nor Gentile, can become a Christian unless he believes God's word and believes in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Nathan turned pale. The teacher knew very well how he hated the name Jesus. She watched him closely and prayed he would not lose his temper again and walk out. There was anger in his voice as he said, But God's word does not tell about this man... The one you spoke about. It is, only, it is only in your Bible, which tells about him, not in the Jews' Bible. Nathan, history proves that Jesus Christ was nailed to the cross. You know that, don't you? Nathan nodded his head. Do you observe Passover at your house? Of course. You remember then that the very first Passover was a terrifying time for the Egyptians. That night, God killed the oldest son and the oldest beast in every Egyptian family. But your people and mine, Nathan, the Jews, were not touched by the death angel. Why not? Because each Jewish family obeyed God by killing a lamb and putting its blood outside the door. When the Lord saw the blood, he passed over that house. So what died instead of the oldest son, Nathan? The lamb. Right you are. And for hundreds of years after that, God's people, the Jews, offered lambs and other animals as sacrifices for their sins. The people themselves should have been punished for their sins. What took their punishment? The lamb or animal that died and was burned on the altar. That's right, Nathan. Now, if you'll let me, I'd like to read from the Jews' Bible, the Old Testament. Okay, read. Turning to, anybody know? Isaiah. Isaiah, <laughs> Isaiah 53. Yeah. The teacher read what the Jewish prophet wrote. It's Isaiah 53, 5 through 7. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. As she read, Nathan became red in the face. He was angry. When she read the tenth verse, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, he hath put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, Nathan stopped her. So you are a deceiver after all, he shouted, just like all Christians. You tell me you're going to read from the Old Testament, but instead you read from your Bible, the New Testament. Did you think I wouldn't know the difference? You're reading about Jesus dying. There, he had said that hated word, Jesus. He bit his tongue hard to punish himself. But don't think you can deceive me as you do those other kids. Goodbye. I have to go home. 
Nathan, the teacher pleaded, will you please look at this Bible? I'm not deceiving you. Truly, I'm not. I am reading from the Old Testament. Look, Nathan, let me show you. Just look for yourself. It is from Isaiah, your own prophet. He wrote these words, wrote them 700 years before Christ died. But Nathan would not listen. He bolted for the door. With his hand on the doorknob, he turned, saying, Okay, now it's your, my turn. Will you read from the Old Testament where I ask you to read? <laughs> of course, Nathan, of course. Where shall I read? Deuteronomy 6.4, Nathan replied belligerently. Many times Nathan had repeated the words of Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Now he waited for the teacher to read them aloud. Nathan knew he was being rude again, but he didn't care. He didn't care a bit. He knew how to think, didn't he? She was insulting his brain. After she finished reading, Nathan said, Now, here is another question. How can you Christians worship three gods? But we do not worship three gods, Nathan. Nathan was startled. He had always been told that Christians worship three gods. Then how can you say that that... That man is God. You say Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all God. If that isn't three, then I don't know how to count. <laughs> Ignoring his rudeness, the teacher said, Nathan, if you will stay five minutes longer, I'll explain. I warn you, this is from the New Testament, but it does tell you why you cannot understand about God the three in one, nor can you understand certain other things in the Bible. So, is all Nathan said, but he stayed. Why do I stay here and listen to her? He wondered. He could not know it was because the teacher was praying that this intelligent Jewish boy might listen. Listen and come to know the Savior, the Messiah. Turning quickly to 1 Corinthians 2.14. The man who does not have the Spirit of God does not accept the things which come from the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. When the Lord Jesus was here on earth, she explained, his own people refused to, to receive him. They did not believe him to be the Son of God. No one finds it easy to turn to the Savior, but for us Jews, it is especially difficult. God has allowed us to be blind to the fact that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. God turned from the Jews when they refused to receive his son. Tenderly, the teacher added, But God loves the Jewish people, Nathan, and he loves you particularly. That's why he led you here to my house. <laughs> he wants you to know that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. If you believe him and trust him to forgive your sins, then God's Spirit will help you to understand the Bible, both yours and mine. This I'll never do, Nathan sneered. Seeing the love and concern in the teacher's face, he added more gently, I'm sorry, I can't believe this. Sadly, the teacher said to Nathan, there is much you will never really understand. Being wise, she knew there was, there was much Nathan wanted to know and understand. When Nathan opened the door, she asked, will you come to Happy Day Club next Friday, Nathan? We are studying the life of David now, and I think you would like this. These lessons are from your Old Testament, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know, Nathan said, already ashamed of his display of temper. Perhaps I'll come to, again to talk to you. I want to know more about your religion. I'll be home every day at this time, Nathan, whenever you can. Stop on your way home from school. Nathan could now know how many plans the could not know how many plans the teacher changed so she would be at home every day after school. Mm -hmm. Weeks later, Nathan visited the teacher again. He had great news. His father had made definite plans to move his family to Israel just as soon as school was over for the year. Oh, this troubled the teacher. Would the boy believe he went away before would the boy believe before he went away? Yet she simply smiled and said, I'm happy for you, Nathan. It would be wonderful if you were there when the Messiah returns to earth. He will come to Jerusalem, you know. Nathan started to speak and stopped. Let's not talk about the Messiah today, he said. Perhaps another time. Today I wish you would explain to me why Christians worship three gods. You did not answer that question when I was here before, remember? Yes, Nathan, I remember. And I have something here we call an object lesson. 
Object lessons help us to understand certain things. This is one I shall be using at the Happy Day Club. I got it ready to try to help you understand the Trinity, God, the three in one. Holding a cardboard triangle in her hand, she explained, we'll call this triangle man. <coughs> there, is, there is more to a man than his body. You know that, Nathan, don't you? Yes, I know that. Each side of this triangle represents part of a whole man. One side stands for his body, the house in which he lives. Turning the triangle, she said, this part represents his soul. Through his soul, he has memory, he loves, he hates, etc. And this third represents man's spirit, through which he can know and worship God. Do you see, Nathan, that a man can be one and yet have three parts? Yes. <clears throat> Holding up another triangle, the teacher said, Now, let this triangle represent God. One God. One side is Father, another is Son, and the third side is Holy Spirit. So God is three in one, just as a man is three in one. Does this help you to understand, Nathan? A little, Nathan said grudgingly. I know you cannot truly understand, Nathan, because you will not believe God's word about his son, your Messiah, who came to die for the sins of the world, your sins and mine, Nathan. Well, goodbye, Nathan said politely this time. I promise you I shall think about this. Not believe, of course, but at least think. <laughs> this I have been taught to do, and think Nathan did. Many times, he thought. Many times, the teacher prayed. And then all else was forgotten in the rush to get everything ready in order to leave for Israel at the time scheduled. Oh, <laughs>